Hi everyone, welcome back to my weekly meal plan. Uh, if you haven't listened before, each week I just share with you guys what's on my meal plan for my family for the upcoming week. I think meal planning is really important for wasting less food, saving money, reducing stress, and trying to figure out what's for dinner. Um, so I share my meal plan to hopefully maybe give you some motivation to um, get yours together or give you some ideas. Uh, maybe something I say might prompt you to think like, oh yeah, I haven't made that in a while and maybe it'll just kind of help you get your meal plan together. Um, so that's why I share this. And I do only share um, dinners because that's all I meal plan for. Um, I do rotate my meals on a regular basis. So, um, you know, over the course of time, there's not a whole lot of new recipes. I try and keep things really simple. And what makes it simple for me is to rotate the things that we eat on a regular basis. Um, I do throw in something new every once in a while, maybe a side dish or, you know, we'll try out a new recipe, but we're in a busy time of life right now. Um, I have three, well, two teenagers and a 20 year old in college, and it's just kind of crazy. So that's why I do it that way. So this week's, um, oh, one other thing just forgot to tell you. The blog version of this meal plan with links to the recipes can be found at lolasfrugallife.com um, just in case you're, uh, you know, you want to find the link to the actual recipe that I reference. So the meal plan starts on Saturday, July 10th. This episode comes out every Wednesday. So the meal plan always starts that upcoming Saturday in case you were going to actually follow along and make any of the meals. You have time to do your, um, your whatchamacallit, your... Uh, grocery list. <laughs> so um, anyway, so this meal plan, like I said, starts on Saturday, July 10th. Now, every once in a while, I do not have a meal to share for a certain day, and that's going to happen this week, which is for Saturday, July 10th. We were invited to a graduation party. Um, my middle daughter just graduated high school, and um, one of her friends and her twin um, brother just graduated with her as well, and we were invited to their house, so I will not be cooking dinner for Saturday, July 10th. So I do not have a meal, um, a recipe to share with you for that day. So we'll jump ahead to Sunday, July 11th. So for Sunday, July 11th, I'm doing creamy herbed pork chops, which is from allrecipes.com. Um, this recipe includes a, like a little sauce that you make, like a little gravy kind of, um, to go over top of the pork chops, which um, is uh, just like an all, like a flour, butter, uh, bouillon type recipe, you know, like gravy. Um, honestly, I don't even make that. When I make this recipe, I go super simple and lazy, but it's so good. And I just take the bone in pork chops and I season them with Montreal steak seasoning and I fry them up in butter on the stovetop, like just enough butter, like to kind of like cover the bottom of the pan and then just brown the pork chops in the butter and they come out so, so good with the Montreal steak seasoning. So I don't even bother with making this sauce because it just, I just like it as is, but I'm sure adding the sauce would be really good too. I just kind of, if I can make something quicker and easier, a lot of times I tend to do that. So we're having that. And then as a side dish, I'm doing spicy sweet potato casserole, which is from foodnetwork.com. This is actually something I do usually more like a, as a holiday dish, but I have some sweet potatoes and I was trying to find something different other than just cook them in the air fryer like I usually do. Um, so this is really good. And it's like you slice the sweet potatoes and you bake them in the oven. And then at the end, uh, you know, you like their seasonings, you know, that you put on them. And then at the end, you pour in some heavy cream and then like bake them a, a little bit longer and the potatoes and the seasonings to kind of like soak up the cream. And it's really good. So I, I thought, you know what, why not? It's, it's a holiday dish kind of like something I wouldn't normally make in the summer, but I thought it would be good. And I'm using the air fryer for something else. So I didn't want to I, so I'm not making sweet potatoes in there anyway. So I figured, oh, this would be a good alternative. Um, and the pork chops cook on the stove top. So we'll have something on the stove, the oven, and the air fryer. So for the air fryer, I'm going to be making um, air fryer asparagus fries, which is from allrecipes.com. And I made these um, a couple weeks ago, I think. And they were devoured. Um, again, this is, a, this is a recipe where it also includes part of the recipe is to make a dipping sauce. I didn't do that. I just served it with ranch dressing. Um, but one tip, if you do make these, what I did was I put the, um, as the, the first time I made these like a, a pretty long time ago, I did them like in batches and it took forever to make in the air fryer. 
because I would do like one row of asparagus spread out enough so that I could kind of cook right and then take them out and do another batch. But I was watching a YouTube video. I can't remember who it was. Um, I honest, I can't, I feel like it could have been, um, what is her name? Like Minimal Mom or I can't remember what her name is on YouTube. But anyway, um, it was her or her sister and they um, like crisscrossed the asparagus spears in the air fryer. So kind of like put like the first layer and then put like the other, the next layer like going the opposite, like a tic-tac-toe board and then like the third layer going the opposite of that again. And they came out perfect that way. So that's how I'm gonna do it. That way I can get everything in the air fryer in one shot and not have to be sitting there making batches of the asparagus because it kind of discouraged me from making it because it took too long. But doing it this way, they came out great and it was really easy once I got them in there, then they just cooked and then I took them all out and we ate them and the kids loved them. Um, so anyway, so that's for Sunday. So for Monday, we are doing hot dogs. Um, I do that once a month. I call it our health food night kind of as a joke, but anyway, um, it's a quick, simple meal and we are just, I just boil the hot dogs on the stove. Um, I also do um, uh, potatoes in the air fryer to put on the hot dogs. So to make like Italian hot dogs, which I just recently learned. I guess Italian hot dogs might be like a New Jersey, New York type of thing because someone had asked me recently um, what Italian hot dogs were and I was just kind of always under the impression that everybody knew what they were, but it seems like it might be a regional thing. So an Italian hot dog is basically just like a hot dog with like potatoes, peppers, and onions on it generally. I mean, that's how I always know them. So what I do is I cut up potatoes, peppers, and onions and I toss them with a little olive oil. I cook them in the air fryer and then we put them on, on top of the hot dog, um, in the hot dog bun, and it's really good. And then I'm also gonna just be doing a can of um, pork and beans to go with that, and it'll just be a really quick, simple dinner night. Uh, so that's for Monday. For Tuesday, we always do some type of a Mexican theme. I think I have like five things now that I'm rotating through the Tuesdays. Um, I used to do like tacos every other Tuesday and whatever, but I added in a few new things to try and mix it up a little more, but still keeping with that theme. So this week we are doing chicken chimichangas with sour cream sauce, allrecipes.com. Same thing like all the other recipes I've been sharing so far. I don't make the sauce. Um, I'm sure it's good, but I just try and do simpler. And I just put out some sour cream to go with them and we just will dip it in like the sour cream. I'll put out some salsa, avocado, whatever I have, and we'll just kind of use that rather than making the separate sauce. So I basically just use this recipe for the method of making the chicken um, chimichangas. And one comment I do have that I started doing is um, this recipe calls for boiling the chicken um, first, you know, to cook it in the seasonings. Um, but I started doing, if you have an instant pot, I started doing the chicken in the instant pot instead. And it's so much quicker and easier. You literally just throw the chicken in there, throw some water. If you look up how to cook chicken, like raw chicken breast in the Instant Pot, it'll it'll give it to you on the internet like really easily. I don't have that information specifically with me right now. But um, I just cook it in there and then rather than, cause boiling it is such a pain in the neck cause you have to like get the timing right and everything. And I don't know, like I feel like I'm always checking it. And then if it's like a big piece of chicken breast, I gotta like try and like pull it open, see if it's cooked inside. It just seems to come out perfectly cooked in the Instant Pot every time so far. So just throwing that tip out there. But anyway, so I'm um, making those um, chicken chimichangas and then um, making it with a bagged salad, just like one of those salads you buy at the grocery store that has the toppings and the dressing and all that included. So we'll have that on the side. For Wednesday, I'm doing bacon wrapped barbecue shrimp. That's from allrecipes.com. This is one of my favorite shrimp recipes. It's just so easy to make. You just throw everything on a pan and throw it in the, um, in the oven. And um, like I've mentioned before, when I make this recipe, I don't actually wrap the shrimp in the bacon. I take the bacon and I cut it up in like little squares and I just kind of lay it all over the top of the shrimp. It's just, it's so much easier than sitting there trying to wrap all the pieces of shrimp. And you basically get the same effect and you just, when you grab your food, you just grab a piece of bacon and a piece of shrimp and put it in your mouth together and it's the same thing. So that's that. And then I'm also gonna be making, um, Hellman's Original Potato Salad from foodnetwork.com. I'm sorry, not Food Network, just food.com. Um, that's just like your typical potato salad with like mayonnaise and um, I put hard boiled eggs in it. I think that's part of the recipe. Yeah, hard boiled eggs and um, just like salt, sugar, vinegar, you know, all that type of stuff. 
it's kind of a little more complicated for a weekday meal than I like to do just because of cooking the potatoes. But what I've been doing again is cooking the potatoes in the Instant Pot. Um, I found, uh, I looked up how to cook them in the Instant Pot, same type of thing. You could just look it up real quick and see how long if you have an Instant Pot. And it's just much easier to kind of um, do that. Like I'll have those cooking while I'm getting something else ready or doing something else maybe earlier in the day. And then um, that way I could just whip up the potato salad kind of quickly. Um, but potato salad is one of the things my kids look forward to in the summer. So I've kind of been trying to squeeze it in a little bit more often when I can. And I thought that would kind of go good with the shrimp. So, and then I'm also just gonna do green beans, like fresh green beans in the air fryer, just kind of toss them with some olive oil and, and um, salt and pepper and, or maybe just salt, probably just olive oil and salt or, or garlic salt maybe, and just throw them in the air fryer. And those are always good like that. For Thursday, for Thursdays, we usually always do either soup and grilled cheese or um, uh, what you may call it, breakfast for dinner, because that's the night that I go grocery shopping. And um, it just makes, I just try and make the meal like really easy because it just takes so long to go grocery shopping and come like after work, go grocery shopping, bring home all the stuff, put it away. And then I don't really want to spend a lot of time cooking dinner after. Um, so I'm doing slow cooker corn chowder because this day we're doing soup and grilled cheese. Um, that's from damndelicious.net, D-A-M-N delicious.net. And this is one of my favorites um, in the slow cooker, this corn chowder. You pretty much just kind of cook it all day and then at the end you take like a um, immersion blender and you just kind of like blend it up a little bit um, so that the corn's not like in whole pieces. It kind of makes it like that creamy corn chowder type consistency. This recipe does call for um, ears of corn and you like are supposed to like remove the kernels but I usually try and go simple. So um, I actually just used canned corn and it comes out just as good. So that's just a tip if you don't have time um, to use the fresh corn. I definitely wouldn't have time for that because I'm usually putting a crock pot meal together in the morning before work. So I don't, I definitely wouldn't have time to sit there like removing the kernels off of fresh corn and, and you know, all that kind of stuff. And then like I said, we'll just do grilled cheese sandwiches on the side with those um, to go with the soup. So that's Thursday. Last meal on the meal plan for this week is for Friday, July 16th. And I'm going to be doing oven fried breaded pork chops. I kind of try not to do pork chops two times in a week, but whatever, they're two totally different kinds and I don't know, why not? Um, so we're gonna be doing oven fried breaded pork chops, which is from skinnytaste.com. By the way, not that there's anything wrong with pork chops. I just try and like mix up the meals throughout the week, but I don't know. I do chicken a lot more than once a week, so I don't know why it would matter to do pork chops more than once in a week. Um, anyhow, um, so that's from skinnytaste.com, and this is a baked pork chop that is coated in a mixture of panko breadcrumbs and crushed cornflakes, super easy. Um, I use the boneless um, pork chops and th that is what the recipe calls for. Um, I like to use the thinner ones. Um, it just kind of comes out, it just, I don't know, I just think it tastes good when you have like a thinner pork chop with the breading and everything. Of course that's because you're getting more breading than pork chop, but um, that recipe is really good. And then I'm also going to be doing easy rice baked casserole to go with it, which is from foodnetwork.com. So that's like a rice casserole that has frozen spinach in it, eggs, cheese, and um, you just bake it in the oven. That takes a while to bake. Hopefully it's not a really hot day because it bakes in the oven for like 45 minutes. So normally what I would do is get that in the oven while I'm getting the pork chops ready to cook because the pork chops only bake in the oven for like 20 minutes. So if I get the rice baking in there and then I get the pork chops ready in the meantime. As soon as I take the rice out, I can just pop the pork chops in for 20 minutes and then dinner will be ready. So that's it for today. I hope this is helpful to you in getting your meal plan together or getting some ideas to have for dinner. Um, don't forget you can email me with any questions or suggestions at lolasfrugallife at gmail.com. You can follow me on Instagram and Facebook at lolasfrugallife. You can also find blog posts for each episode on my website at lolasfrugallife.com, including this meal plan, like I said, with the recipe links, um, you can find those on there. You can also join our private listeners group at facebook.com slash group slash lolasfrugallife. 
If you enjoy the show, please make sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, or wherever you listen from. And I would love it if you would screenshot the show and tag me on Instagram. Also, if you could take a couple seconds to rate and review the podcast, that would be really helpful to me. Um, I would really appreciate that so much. Um, If you don't have the time to write a review, maybe if you could at least give me a five-star rating if you enjoy the show, that would be super helpful. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope you have a really awesome day.